Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug video. And hey look, at long last we're finally getting some content for the upcoming Miraculous movie. At long last. Remember those days when it was heavily speculated the film was going to come out this year, like in December or some shit? And then just radio silence? <laughs> Classic Miraculous. But yeah, now I think we're looking at a summer release, I think it was. And I mean, we'll see how long that lasts, but they've released the trailer now, so maybe they're pretty secure in their estimates this time. Not that it really matters. I'd prefer it actually be good instead of being bad and rushed. But yeah, the trailer's out, so get hyped. And so today, that's what I want to do. Work our way through the trailer. And from that, we'll see what we can find. And yeah, from what I understand, this is sort of going to be a summary type of movie, at least I think so. Pretty much a complete run through of the first major story arc of the show, which is, of course, Gabe as Hawk Moth. At least, I'd assume that's what it's going to be. I feel like not defeating the villain at the end of the film is probably not the best idea. It works for a show, but for a film? I don't know. But then again, that feels also quite rushed. But yeah, who really knows? I just remember hearing that this would end up being a summary of the first five seasons, but that might be wrong. After all, if you do have a bunch of seasons of the show to work with, they could afford to milk this thing a little bit. You could probably turn those first five seasons into, what, two or three movies? Films that are both concise and have enough of the story in them to make sense. But we'll see later on, because now we have a trailer to watch. Okay, so first things first, this trailer looks damn good. If they can maintain this visual quality for the cinematic release, it's actually going to make this show borderline unwatchable to me. And I'm not talking about, you know, character models or anything like that, although, holy shit, the character models, non-static hair, complex facial expression, fluid animation, yeah, but also just the environments, the water, the backgrounds, it all looks so damn good. I just don't know how, after you've seen this film, you could go back to the relative potato quality that we get in the show. And I mean, that's just the general vibe I get from the trailer. But it's time for some specifics. So we start off the trailer inside Marinette's iconic school. And what do you know? Actual interior hallways. A bunch of background characters that make the world feel alive and more detailed. Hell yeah! Anyway, Marinette's walking through the halls. Everybody's staring at her, whispering about how clumsy she is. Basically setting up her character as a bit of an outsider really upping those sympathy levels from the get-go. We then hear Alia talking to Marinette about how she has a reputation for being a walking disaster while she blows up something in the chemistry lab, so it really does look like they're going as hard as they can on the whole weird outsider vibe as they possibly can. Somebody that doesn't really have that many close friends, which is going to lead into her and Alia bonding when Alia comes into the school. And I mean, these are some classic tropes right here. Classic tropes that you see in so many early 2000s coming-of-age type of films, or school-age type of films, or even in just films when somebody would talk about how they never fit in during their school life. It would inevitably cut away to a scene like this, where they blow up the science lab, very nostalgic. We then actually get a look at the character models for Alia and Chloe, and Jesus, yeah, they're really going hard on this film, I tell you. You can see the light reflecting out of their eyes. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of amusing to me how Marinette comes across in this trailer. Very shy, very downtrodden. And I mean, yeah, I get it, but at the same time, it's surprising. Because she hasn't been like that consistently since the actual Origins episode during, what, season one or so? And, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's kind of necessary. But it just isn't what I'm used to. And for people that have never seen the show, that's going to be their first impression, which is kind of funny to me. Anyway, Chloe then bursts onto the scene and tells her that she's a disgrace to the school and probably bullies her some more off screen, causing her to run off and hide. And honestly, whilst Gabe and the Butterfly Miraculous are in the trailer itself, I did find it interesting that Chloe was framed as the far more obvious villain than him. Especially for people that don't know the story. Are they going to up her importance to events here? Anyway, Marinette runs off and Sabrina, who is with Chloe, seems to be quite sad looking, which was interesting. Looks like they're going for a more sympathetic Sabrina, because in the show, she actually sucks as well. And she only really seems to care when she's the victim of Chloe's bullying, not anybody else. But here, she actually legit seems sad for Marinette. Moving on, Marinette runs away and heads out of the school, and we cut away to a later scene where Marinette's hiding from Chloe, who's obviously been back to bullying her again. She leans on a door, that's clearly the entrance to Master Fu's shop, and you see Tiki shoot past the window, the door opens, Marinette falls in, and Tiki flies around her as a pink burst of light, telling her that she's the chosen one and asking if she's ready. So yeah, this feels very never-ending story-esque. Our hero's getting bullied at school, which is noticed by an old dude. The old dude then just happens to leave an old artifact out, and our hero then takes it, and their journey begins with their life never being the same again. And it just seems like that's the vibe they're going for here, which I think is better than, 
oh, thank you for helping me across the road. I'm going to break into your house to leave you a magic jewel now. Ugh, creepy, Master Fu. Creepy. Anyway, Marinette puts on the earrings and powers up, and yeah, her suit's looking pretty slick in HD. And then we get our first look at Cat Noir, who also looks pretty awesome as well. They have a bit of banter, which does make me wonder, how far are they going to push their dynamic, you think? The show's famous for its massively stretched out storylines, and none was more stretched out than the Love Square, where Adrian liked Ladybug, but only interacts with her as Cat Noir, whom she isn't interested in, whilst the opposite is true for Marinette. She liked Adrian, but he didn't like her that way. And obviously, that's changing in season 5, but for the first four seasons, that was our status quo. And so I'm wondering, are they going to bother showing the full range of the dynamic? It's a pretty massive plot point, but I don't see how you'd have time for a full resolution if you play it out like that. The more I think about it, definitely feels like this is more than one film in the works, planting the seeds for the future now. If this thing does well, which I kind of think it might, I'll fully expect them to try and make this a full-blown cinematic universe. Whether they succeed is another matter entirely, but honestly, I think it would be foolish to not at least attempt it. And since the show is so popular in a whole bunch of countries, I'm thinking it's going to do quite well at the box office. But more on that later. They just need to ramp up the advertising, I think. Back on topic, though. We then have some Lady Noir moments in the old theatre building. Cat Noir prancing around on some clouds. And my god, those are some truly fluffy clouds. They look so soft. <sighs> The duo then team up in what seems to be an abandoned street carnival, probably abandoned due to a random villain turning up to crash the party. And I know I'm harping on about it, but damn it, these visuals are so good. Just everything about it. Oh. But this scene especially was just so bright and vibrant. How am I so hyped for this? We then see Marinette on her balcony in the midst of a storm, looking at her earrings, before getting a determined look on her face. So, based on context... This would probably be after her first run as Ladybug. She's had a run through, she's self-conscious, she doesn't think she can do it, she has a lot of self-doubt, and then she isn't sure whether she should keep using them once another villain appears or the original villain returns. And so she has her big hero moment where she chooses to act. She chooses to become Ladybug, and off she goes to save the day with Cat Noir. We then see Ladybug and Cat Noir inside Notre Dame Cathedral, with a villain lurking outside, before we cut to said villain confronting them, and Cat Noir jumping atop its back as it blasts through Notre Dame and into the river. And looks kind of like a gargoyle. In the origins, Ivan gets akumatized into a big rock man, so I suppose this could be him, but they also might make it an original character that has something to do with the cathedral, because, you know, the gargoyles are a pretty big link. And at the same time as all of this, Ladybug's attached to his back via Yo-Yo and is pretty much water skiing at this point. And yeah, once again, once again, once again, the visuals. Whew! I just think I'm in shock seeing the water. And then you go back to look at the water in the show and it's like, ooh. We also then get a look at Gabe and the Butterfly Miraculous and we see him powering up. And yeah, it is really quite interesting to me that it was hardly in the trailer beyond this. And also that they're not going to try to do the big reveal like they did in the show, where... It's not outright stated that Gabe's Hawkmoth until later on. And you just sit there being like, come on now. They have the same voice actor, and they're doing the same voice pretty much. So I'm glad they're not doing that, but I'm still curious as to how all of this plays out for his character. We then have a few more clips of Lady Noir moments, and hell yeah! Before we see Tiki and Marinette's first proper meeting, where Marinette rightfully freaks out at the existence of a talking, flying red thing. And Tiki quips that she forgot that this part, where she first meets her holder and they freak out, could be so loud. Hell yeah, the return of sassy Tiki, I'm all aboard. But those antenna, I don't know, I feel like they actually look better in the show. Is it just me? They just looked weird to me here. Everything else was better visually, but here I was like, nah. And so yeah, that brings us to the end of the trailer. And Jesus, the entire time I've been waiting for this film, I've had no hype. Next to no hype at all. I figured it would be a lame take on the show. But now, I'm starting to think that this is going to be something special beyond just a cash grab. They have a pre-built fan base and more cash to splash on making this thing actually look good. And so, a bigger chance of actually having a successful theatrical release to get some big box office earnings, because ultimately, that's what matters most. This thing does need to make money. It needs to be successful for them to make more. And I think they're actually in a really good position to have that success. Plus, I think that streamlining things, cutting out filler and taking the best bits of the season is going to work out quite well. Because in hindsight, I don't see how you wrap up Gabe in one film. Maybe a trilogy? A second film brings in the Peacock Miraculous and Senti Monsters and a third to finish it off? I mean, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. But I do think this could be a big film franchise going forward. So, all aboard the hype train. But anyway, with all that being said, these are just my opinions and I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the trailer? 
Do you like it? Hate it? Somewhere in between? Do you think the film's going to do well? Or maybe you think it's doomed to fail? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.